Hello everyone, my name is Nick Wiley, and today we are back with a late um, final homework for Transport 1 assignment. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be talking about flow in a non-circular cylindrical pipe, specifically as we can see a rectangle. Now let's talk about our system before we really get into the nitty gritty, what we want to do, um, and we're going to get into some Python code at the end of the video. First and foremost, let's just talk about what, it, what are the dimensions of our rectangle. First, we have this h, which is going to be unknown. What we're going to be doing is that's going to be our goal of this, of this episode, is going to figure out what this term is going to be. So, OK, so this h is unknown. We know our width, which is going to be 0 0.5 meters, and those are the dimensions of our rectangle, rectangular pipe. So when looking at this diagram right here, what we can see is that we are going to have a rectangular channel in which the fluid is going to be moving um, down a slope. Now, what is the angle of our slope? That's going to be theta, 15 degrees. What is our flow rate? Our flow rate is going to be one meters cubed per second going downwards. Now, as you can see, get rid of that, question mark. As you can see, uh, we have Bernoulli's equation written up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this equation as we have in many, many previous episodes as we manipulate equations in our favor so that they're easier on us to solve in the end. So what we have right here, again, is equation, as you can see, I don't have the negative 4 over 2. I've decided to make it just negative 2. So when looking at this, the first important thing to note is that we're going to be getting rid of a couple terms. How are we going to do that? We're going to do this by recognizing that this is going to be an even channel. What does that mean? It means that the pressure at point 1 is going to be equal to the pressure at point 2. So we can go ahead and do, we can get rid of that term. So we're already making our lives a little bit easier. Now, another important thing to note is that our cross-sectional area at point 1 and point 2 are equal. So that means that the velocities are equal, therefore. So no change in velocity. That term is gone. So what we're going to be left with is these two terms right here. Now, how can we express our altitude in terms of this delta x, the frictional of our frictional heating factor that we have on the right side? What we can do is recognize that this is going to be equal to g delta x, which again is our um, length of our pipe as seen from this frictional heating term on the right. And what we can recognize is that this delta x, the length of our pipe, is simply just going to be sine of our theta, 15 degrees. Wait, why are we not getting rid of that? We'll, get, we'll, we'll fix it again. So as you can see, this is our term. Now what can we do? We can actually change our equation. And what we're going to be left with is a nice equation g sine theta is going to be equal to negative 2f g squared over g. Now the next important thing to talk about is going to be the shear stress that the fluid is going to be putting upon our walls. It is important to note that when talking about the shear stress that is going to be exerted along the walls of a rectangular pipe at this slope at a given velocity, this is going to be equal to the shear stress that is exerted along the walls of a circular pipe at the same velocity. What we can go ahead and do is I'm going to draw us a circular pipe, which we have dealt with before, so it's going to be a lot more familiar and a little bit, uh, a little bit nicer for us. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll draw our cylindrical pipe. So when talking about the shear stress exerted along the walls, what we need to understand, well first, we know that our fluid is flowing downwards, we need to make a force balance. It, and how are we going to do that? Well, what we need to understand is that we have forces in two directions. We have the weight of our fluid moving downwards, and this is going to be equal to our shear stress, which is going to be exerted upwards. Now again, why are we doing this? We're doing this because when you're talking about a, velo a fluid at a given velocity within a rectangular pipe, this is going to be equal to the shear stress exerted along the walls, and it's at a cylindrical or circular pipe at the same velocity. So as long as we're talking about the same velocity, what we're going to be able to do is transfer what we know into something that we don't know yet. So let's just go ahead and get right into that. So when we're talking about the weight of our fluid, what is the weight of our fluid? As we all know from physics, mg. Now what is our m though? g can't do anything about. And actually g is going to become very nice for us as we're going to see, but we'll get there. Um, so we have this m term right here. We can kind of manipulate that. What we can say is we're going to have our density of our fluid multiplied by our volume.
volume multiplied by g is going to be equal to mg. That would make sense. Either way, because it's mass divided by volume, that's what density is. You multiply that by volume, you get mass. But it's going to help us out, so let's go ahead. So how are we going to express this? We don't want to say volume because we want to use terms that we already have. So let's use the length of our pipe, delta x. And let's also use the area, the cross-sectional area of our cylinder that we have here. And then we just need to multiply it by g. And that is going to be equal to our shear stress, which again, we are going to use tau. And we are also going to use the same pretty much term. Well, not the same term. We are actually going to use our wetted perimeter here. Now, why is that? When talking about our shear stress, it is going to be, um, it is going to be exerted along our wetted perimeter of our pipe. So that is why we have our wetted perimeter. It's almost like area, but don't think about it. No, it's not area. It's the, it's this going up. So that going up. So since we know that it's, it's just this part here, just the perimeter, what we need to do is we need to carry that all the way across our cylindrical pipe. So what's that going to be? The length of our pipe, as we've said before, this delta x term that we have up here. So this is what we're going to be left with. Now, as you can see, we have a cancellation. We have our delta x, and we have our delta x. Now, another thing that we're also going to do is we're actually going to divide this by a. And I'm also going to move this g further over here, just so we have a little bit more room to uh, play around with things. So when looking at this, we have a pretty strange term. We have this right here this wetted perimeter over A, the cross-sectional area of our cylindrical pipe, circular pipe. So what is this going to be? What's that going to be? When thinking about the perimeter of a pipe, what is that going to be? It's this right here. And you simply go around the edge. Something that we learned in fifth grade when learning about pi, the number itself, what we figured out was that the depth pi multiplied by our diameter is going to be perimeter, which is the wetted perimeter, the, the entire um, inside of our pipe, which is going to be what is the shear stress is going to be exerted along. So we have pi d, and what are we going to divide that by? Our area. What is the area of a circle? It's pi r squared. So what we can do to keep it consistent is we can make this pi d squared over 4. And why do we have over 4? Because all, it's pi r squared, and then, yeah, I don't know why I'm expecting but r is, when you do our di diameter, it is two times your radius. So we're going to have to divide by four so that we stay consistent. So when we look at this, we have a couple cancellations. Boom, 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 and boom. So what's this going to end up being? This is simply going to be four, because we have a denominator and a denominator, over b. So now we figured out what this term should be. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. We'll put four over D. This is one. And now, as I've said before, what we wanted was that we wanted a term that we could plug into G over here. And now we have that. All we have to do is move this row. And what we're going to get is that G is going to be equal to tau multiplied by 4 over D times the density of our fluid. I've gone ahead and cleaned up our board as we're going to go ahead and we are going to finish the written portion of this before we head into Python. Now, as we were just doing, what we're going to do is we're going to make an expression for the shear stress tau for our circular pipe and then try and translate that sort of easily into our rectangular pipe's shear stress at the same given velocity. So let's go ahead and just plug this in right here. This g term we found, let's plug it in over here. And a quick note before I do this. As you can see, we have a d here and a d here, so I'm going to go ahead and just exclude that for the sake of ease. What we're going to have is we're going to have tau multiplied by 4 over rho. It's going to be equal to oh, multiplied by sine theta. It's going to be equal to 2fv squared. Okay, now what we need to do is we're going to try and isolate this tau our shear stress, because we're going to be using that down here in a minute as we determine what the wetted perimeter over area, that ratio is for our rectangular versus what we had before for our circular pipe. So let's just go ahead, let's just move on. What we're going to do 
We're going to divide this by 4, so we're going to have on the bottom, this quantity, get rid of that 2, we're going to have a 2 sine theta. And we're going to end up with a row on top as we multiply, divide by 4, divide by sine. And this is going to be our expression for tau. The shear stress in our circular pipe. Now the only real difference between these two systems is the difference, as I've said before, in this wetted perimeter over area. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use this expression, this tau expression we have here, multiplied by our different, different, different ratio of our wetted perimeter over area to determine what our shear stress or what Rather, what G is going to be after we isolate it for our rectangular pipe. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about this, this expression here. So we're going to have this rho D is equal to tau multiplied by our wetted perimeter over our area. Now, as we did before, we just had to talk about what this wetted perimeter was, which was the circumference. And then what we had for our area, which was just the area, pi r squared, pi d squared over 4. Now, what we have over here is we're going to have a little bit different as we have a rectangle. As we can see over here, I've made it a little bit easier to observe. I had waves going in my, in my water like a beach, but realistically, it's just going to be pretty much flat in our system, despite like meniscus and stuff within our fluid, if, if there does have to be. Either way, um, when looking at this, we can see, as before, we had the contact, which is around the entire circle. Here, what we have is we are going to have contact between these two walls and the bottom, our width and two of our H's. What we're going to have out of our wetted perimeter is going to be in contact with two times our height, both these sides, plus W. Now what is our area? Well, this is pretty easy. It's simply just going to be our height multiplied by our width. So now what we can go ahead and do is we can simply plug this in right here. So what we're going to be left with, I'll just write it here. We're going to be left with rho g is going to be equal to our expression for tau. Rho f d squared over 2 sine theta. That is going to be multiplied by this term right here, our wetted perimeter, as we learned before, was this equation to do after our force balance. So this is going to be 2h plus w over hw. As we can see, our densities cancel out. And what we're going to be left with is this expression. Now the beauty of this function lies within the fact that we only have one um, unknown, which is going to be our height of our fluid. As we've talked about before, that's the whole purpose of this. Now why is this good for us? With the power of Python root solver, what we can do is we can have our g value, which is going to be 9.81, which we'll set it to. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the value of h so that when we subtract our g 9.81 value, subtracted by this function, it's going to drive it towards 0, giving us the height by alternating the values or changing the value until we get that our gravitational constant is going to be, is subtracted by this, is going to be equal to 0. Never the best at explaining that, but hopefully that makes sense. We're going to be driving to 0 by doing our known g minus this expression here, varying the values of h until we hit 0 and find our height of our fluid. Now, this is a very, very good spot for us, but we do have a couple more things we need to discuss. In the problem, we were given that, where is it? Oh, q. Our flow rate is 1 meter cubed per second. But what, in this equation, what we have is our velocity. So what are we going to want to do? So typically, when we do a problem like this, Typically when we do a problem like this, it is going to be um, the, um, that our Q, our flow rate, is going to be equal to our velocity multiplied by our, multiplied by our area, because velocity is meters per second, multiplied by our area, which is meters squared, then we get a uh, meters cubed per second. So what we can do for our area is we're going to use the area of our rectangle yet again, multiplied by H W. So quick, quickly move things around. What we're going to end up with is that V is going to be equal to Q over HW. So let's go ahead and change this expression a little bit. 
we had a b squared, so let's just go ahead and do this real quick. Now that we're adding a cubed here, what we can do, we can go ahead and make this an hw cubed. Height times width cubed, because we had this squared, we already had an hw down there. Now all we have to do is add a q squared. I hope I didn't delete some of that. No, I believe that's good. So this is going to be our final expression that we're going to use um, for our root solver. Now there is one more important thing to know. It's this F fanning friction factor value. Now what does this utilize? The fanning friction factor and also the Churchill equation is going to utilize Reynolds number. Let me go ahead and write that for you real quick. RE is equal to rho V D over mu. What do you notice about this? We can see that we have d right here. We have the diameter. So what is our effective diameter going to be for this expression? For, for our Reynolds number, we don't have a diameter, but we can talk about the effective diameter that we're going to have. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have this expression over here. We have our weighted parameter over a is going to equal 4 over d. So what we can do is we can go ahead and talk about our weighted perimeter again, which was b to h plus w over our area, hw, is going to be equal to 4 over d. Now a quick thing uh, we can do is we can simply just flip both sides pretty much. And then what we're going to want to do is divide by 4 to get our weighted parameter. That sounds really weird. Here, I'm just going to gonna do some cross multiplication just for you to see. Sometimes I'm like too confident for myself and I, get, I would definitely make a mistake. Okay, there we go. That does indeed look correct from B equal to our diameter. So what we're going to have to do is before we put in our Churchill equation, which we are going to use and we've done in previous videos, we're going to utilize this so that our Python code is a little bit smoother a little bit shorter, hopefully. I'm not the best, but hopefully we can still make it work. Um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put this in before we put in our Reynolds equation, just so that we can utilize this effective diameter. Make sure that D is going to be equal to this. Now, quick note about why the Churchill equation is so important. Uh, it's very important because it works for both laminar and for turbulent flow. So it's very good for us um, in all situations, you can probably say. So, just to wrap things up, the most important equations that we have here, this will be for our root solver, and this will be so that our Reynolds number, our Churchill equation, um, will act appropriately for our non-circular pipe, our rectangular system. So let's go ahead and hop right into the code. Hello everyone, we're back, and we're going to hop straight into the Python coding for our fill rate and our rectangular channel. Now, as you can see, we have a few things that have already shown up in our Python code, which I've drawn directly from something that we've done previously, um, a few videos ago, if you'd like to go watch. Um, I believe it was homework three, um, but either way, let's talk about what we have. So up here we have our import, which is numpy, which we are going to need, obviously. That is very imperative in pretty much everything we do. We also have our root function, as I've described, as we are going to be driving the difference of the gravitational um, constant minus our um, expression. As you can see in here, oh, didn't mean to type that twice. As you can see here, as I've called G prime, we're gonna do the difference of the gravitational constant and this here by varying H using the root solver. It is going to drive the difference of G and G prime given our um, gravitational constant by varying the height of the fluid values until we reach zero. And then it's going to give us that height that gives us that, um, gives us, returns that for us getting a little bit out of ourselves as we tend to do. But we also have some uh, imports already, um, some constants. We have rho, which is the density. We have mu, which is the viscosity. And then we have our gravitational constant, g. And then we also have our Churchill equation, as I previously discussed. I believe I have ran everything so far, okay. Now what we can go ahead and do is we're gonna import some more constants. And as you can see, I've created a little, uh, zoom out a little bit. I can, there we go. Created a little uh, document here for us to speed up the process. So what we have is we have all of our constants. So let's go ahead and start by importing our flow rate, pasting our flow rate if you'd rather. 
Um, I'm not going to include units just to speed up the process. I can. This is going to be in meters. I'll just talk about it rather than creating a um, little comment next to. We also have our width, which I don't know why that's capitalized. It's going to be 0 0.5 meters. And then we're also going to have our theta, which I also don't know why that's uh, capitalized. Uh, here, we'll just do this. Say about theta myself. And if you didn't know from, if you don't remember from, um, maybe not grade school, but like sixth grade, I'm not really 100% sure when we did this, but uh, um, all you have to do is use your uh, degrees multiplied by um, pi divided by 180, and that is going to give you radians, which is what Python uses. So then we have this expression, and I believe that's all we need for now. So these are going to be some of the constants that we're going to be using in our function, which we can go ahead and define. We're going to be using a vector, an array of values of x. What do we want this to be? We want that to be our unknown. So we're going to use a array again. Now, what's the next thing that we need to do? As previously discussed, we have a little bit difference in our Reynolds number um, because we can't use the diameter. So we're going to have to use our, um, what we found the effective diameter to be for our rectangular, um, our rectangular channel. So what we can go ahead and do is we have some derived expressions down here. I think first and foremost, we can start with our diameter value, which is as shown. This will also be in meters. After that, um, I believe we should do, yes, we should do our velocity function because after that, we're gonna be, in, we're gonna be inputting our Reynolds value number, but we want our velocity to be utilizing that Q that we had previously. It'll all make sense in a second. So we have our velocity in terms of Q um, because we have this Q up here. I also could have just gone ahead and put that into here, but for ease, we're just gonna put it right above. And then for this Reynolds number, we can go ahead and plug that in down here. Then next we need to utilize what our F is because as you can see, that is a part of our equation. How do we determine the fanning friction factor? We use Churchill's equation, which we have luckily done previously. Not too difficult of a function, just pretty much typing in uh, a bunch of different, uh, what do you call that, not context, syntax, syntax. Um, syntax errors can come about in a lot of different numbers that you have to use. Either way, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say that F is gonna be equal to our CH. What we're gonna have to do is supply the Reynolds number and our surface roughness, which is that ED, as you can see, right here. So what is our surface roughness? I did not mention this before, but it is going to be 10 to the minus sixth for us. And now I believe that we have everything to, that we need so that we can go ahead and return. So as I've said before, what we're going to be returning is we're going to be returning the difference between our gravitational constant G and our G prime value. And what we're going to do is we're going to iterate H in this equation until the difference between those is equal to zero between G and G prime. I thought that'd be an easier way to discuss it as g and g prime, um, but maybe not because that typically means derivative and everything. But we do have our brackets. I hope my syntax is correct. It looks good. I'm just gonna double check real quick. Yes, so that looks pretty good. That's gonna be cubed multiplied by mg sine theta. Okay, I think that we're looking pretty good here. Oh, no, invalid syntax. Oh, simple little error. I'm glad it wasn't worse than that. Well, it might be worse than that. Oh, wow, it actually worked. <laughs> That's not something I should be saying, but I'm just not very good at coding. Um, I have a friend who's in transport too now, and um, apparently they're going to be changing it into... Um, transport heat and mass versus something else, maybe for upcoming people, but he said that his professor, just like uh, my professor now, Carlos, said that they're gonna be focusing a lot on Python as it is the language of engineering, um, which things for me, but honestly, it, I'm not good at it, but honestly, it, it is pretty interesting that you can do this because this is not something you could do by hand. It's root solver. Either way, I'm, I'm, I'm just talking. So we have our root, and then what we're gonna need to supply is our equation and our initial guess. In brackets, um, we are going to guess 0 0.1. And then I hopefully this will give us the value of the solution converged. And okay, 
this time I believe I can do this by this. So. And this is going to be the value that we have for our height of the fluid um, in our system. Uh, the only unknown that we had and what we've done is we've gone ahead and solved it via the root solver. Um, a little bit difficult, a little tricky of a problem. Um, transferring between the circular pipe and the rectangular pipe definitely gave me a little bit of a little bit of a brain fart. Um, you might be able to tell, but as I progress through the video, I feel like I understood it a little bit better. Um, and I guess that's what this this is that's what this is all about. It's not a guess. That's what this is all about. Um, but I thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.